Welcome, everyone. Uh, I am uh, logged in to the uh, current version of the Remedy Asset Management module, which most of you, of course, already know is just one of several modules that make up the ITSM suite uh, from Remedy. And while today we're going to be sticking to the asset management module, as you would expect, it is very tightly integrated with all of the other modules. So with Incident and Change Management, you're obviously pulling information from your asset uh, repository as well. So I'm just going to go into uh, a typical uh, console view now of my uh, asset management system. And as typical with uh, most Remedy consoles, if you're familiar with them, you kind of have your work selection detail over on your left side. And in the middle over here, of course, we're seeing the results of whatever selection that, that we have made here. So here I'm looking at my various configuration items that, uh, that we're managing through our, our Remedy system. Obviously, these assets are being pulled from the Atrium CMDB that is a part uh, of Remedy. And of course, you can look at things in a number of different ways to slice and dice them. So here I'm just basically looking at a list in alphabetical uh, uh, order of uh, deployed assets that we have out there. But if I want to come in and view my uh, assets by my business services, I can easily come in and look at a different type of view. If I want to look at uh, my virtual systems, oops, because we don't have any out there on the virtuals. If I want to look at them by status, uh, you know, when the, the ones that have been uh, all of them, which is the original view we were doing, or if I want to see what I'm waiting to be received. Again, just a number of different ways I can uh, slice and dice those. So let's take one of our assets and let's look at the type of information that, uh, that we actually track in our Remedy Asset Management System. So here I pulled up a server that uh, has the name of Maybach that we're using here. You see that it's currently in a deployed state as opposed to uh, you know, in preposition or back at vendor for repair or whatever the various statuses that you would have there. Uh, we have also predefined that when this server has an outage that we're going to automatically set our urgency to high and our impact is to large and that sets the priority as far as scheduling repairs. And I've even on this one indicated how many users are affected anytime there's an outage with this particular uh, server. And of course, this is really used in conjunction when we're planning in change management to do something to this server. We can very quickly get an idea of its impact uh, to the organization if this server is not available. Uh, down in the bottom, just some general information about what we're track. Obviously, it's, it's uh, following the operational and product categorizations that are used within Remedy uh, down to the model and the version of what we're doing, where it's currently located, of course, and I can get that down to the floor and room if I, if I want to. Uh, when was the install date? And then other specifications you may want to track as far as, you know, what domain does this guy sit on, how much memory has it got in it. Again, these are kind of user configurable as to what you want to uh, track there. And then, of course, as with every uh, Remedy console, I can record my work information on notes and all of what I'm doing around this asset over time. Uh, an asset such as a computer system, obviously, you'd want to be able to track support contracts that, uh, that you have there. And of course, you could just highlight that, and you can view it, although we'll spend some time later, on your support contract, what it's tied to, start date, uh, what is the renewal date, and obviously, you would get uh, appropriate notifications around those, uh, those things. Uh, who are the people that are associated with this given asset, this, uh, this, this Dell server here? And here I've got one indicated that it's actually owned by Mary Mann, but if I want to create other associations, I can, uh, I can do that as well. So I'm going to indicate that, uh, that we've got another uh, or a person that we want to associate here. So since I've got mine set up in multi-tenancy, I'll just bring up a list. And maybe we're going to say in this case that we also want to show that there's an association of Bob uh, of, uh, Baxter that we've got here. And it's owned by Murray, but maybe I'm going to indicate that, uh, that Bob here is their primary support contract. And so I can have different relationships as far as owner, uh, service or uh, support organization, user of various equipment using my people association tab. Then under my relationships tab is, of course, where we're really leveraging the CMDB and, and the fact that our asset management module is very tightly integrated 
with the other ITSM ones. So here I can see that this, uh, this is related to a service, uh, our employee benefits application. So that's my other related assets that I have primarily there. If I want to look and see you know, what change requests have uh, impacted this particular one, I can look at that from that perspective. If I wanted to look at uh, you know, known errors that may have been associated with that, you know, whichever way I would like to look at that, I can kind of get those uh, ideas there. And of course, the real importance of this tab and tracking these relationships is to then be able to understand uh, from a change management standpoint, as well as just a visual inspection of this machine as to what are its dependencies. So now that I have this one highlighted here, if I want to explore this configuration item, again, using the inbuilt functionality of the Atrium CMDB and the fact that we have automatically discovered our relationships as we populated that CMDB, I'm able to bring in a, a, a graphical representation of the server and the, here are the uh, applications that are running on it and here are the end user services that are being provided. And this is a very simplistic one, but you can build this chart out as detailed as you need to be and be able to uh, look at the uh, configuration uh, relationships here visually. This is also available to be able to see this view in the, uh, in the other modules there as well. So that's really what the importance of that is. Uh, the relationship detailed is where if you were bringing in detailed configuration information and you wanted to show that, you could have that uh, show up in this table uh, here. And then, of course, the whole purpose of the Remedy Asset Management Module, or one of its primary purposes, is to track the life cycle of that asset over time, including all of the cost associated with that item. So in this case, you know, we can see here, you know, what we actually paid for the server. We can see various ongoing support uh, or cost actions here, like the support contracts. And if we were to have to come out and have other things that we wanted to track, as you can see here, there are a number of these. Uh, right out of the box that you could pick on. But if we have to have the vendor come in and do some emergency uh, services to this device that wasn't covered under the normal support contract, we could record that or, or whatever the appropriate uh, measure would be there. Uh, notice, of course, that uh, here I am not depreciating this one. But if you mark an asset that you would like to actually have the asset depreciated within Remedy, it does support all of the primary depreciation methods. You know. Uh, double declining balance, straight line depreciation, whichever mode you, you may want to do that. So it is available. Then I can also track you know, any outages that have been associated with this devices. Uh, I don't happen to have them in this particular one, but it gives you the idea of, in general, you know, what is the type of information that, we are, uh, that we're looking at on any one of our assets here. So let's move on now to what are the day-to-day -day things that we're going to do as we try to manage this asset. So if I go back to my, uh, my navigation pane over here, we can see that we have the ability, first off, since we're going to have this in here, to actually have a running inventory. So if I pull my uh, inventory query screen up, and I'll just say, show me all the things that we currently have in inventory there for this particular group. It can bring you back a list of the configuration items that are available. And of course, as we all know, a configuration item, it can be hardware, it can be software, or any other thing that you want to track quantities on here. And uh, in this case, it shows me what I own, where it's located, and how many I have. And I could actually grab this, uh, this workstation, this HP desktop, right from this, uh, uh, this screen if I wanted to do that and assign it over to the appropriate uh, person and so forth right from here. You also have a very extensive uh, contract management system within, uh, within Remedy. And it follows all of the standard types of support contracts, warranty contracts uh, that you would get from a vendor. And you're able to kind of go in and do that. Let's just take a look at one of these. Here's our warranty contract. And again, it tracks the details about that. What's the call center associated with it? Obviously, what are the start and end dates of that with the appropriate notifications going out? Uh, uh, what organization does it belong to. This is a 36-month term on this particular type of contract. And so you're able to do that. 
and one of the things that they've added in uh, in Remedy, uh, actually back a release ago on 7.5, this is actually 7.603 release, is they now actually have a separate console for managing your software assets because one of the things they're trying to do is help you get uh, uh, follow your license compliances. So under the current version here, we're able to track the various types of software license types that you might have. You know, out of the box, they are already predefined for an enterprise uh, license, for a site license, for a per copy per person, or a per copy per CPU. The various licensing types are predefined, and you can get them in there. And if you have happened to have negotiated a very unique licensing agreement with one of your vendors, there's actually a wizard to let you define your dependencies there. So if we go in and just pull up one of these, again, we can see you know, what the company division is, what license type. This one's a per instance type here for a server. Uh, it's currently uh, uh, executed here. Again, the various cost information. And it rolls up to a, to, this is the actual product that we have here. It's a SQL Server license. And you know we can see you know what other uh, uh, items it pertains to, the relationships it's got there. We can see whether there's a related certificate that it's tied to. If you had it, for example, to a master contract, you would be able to see that one. You'll notice that this particular one is showing us that we're out of compliance here. If we go over and look at our compliance details, we'll see that we've indicated that we had purchased five copies of this particular uh, SQL Server licenses. However, we found that we now have seven of them out on our network. We should have already been alerted twice through email notifications. One, when we got within two of the five that we had allotted, a notification should have come out. When we got down to where there was only one left, a secondary notification should have gone out. But in some shape and fashion as we made our last discovery run and compared the results of that discovery run to what we have within our CMDB here, we find that we are in breach here and then we can take the appropriate uh, 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 corrections to make sure that we get back into compliance and we avoid the large costs that can, uh, that can, can ensue uh, if the vendor decides to come in and do a uh, compliance there. And of course, we provide KPIs on a lot of our screens here. So if I need to very quickly look at more of an, at an enterprise level, you know, show me where, where I uh, have my compliances there. Show me the distribution of software types I have by different manufacturers over here. Show me uh, licenses purchases, purchased versus deployed. If I want to look at the actual products by vendor, you know, I can kind of get a, a, a reach there. So these Key performance indicators are a uh, included part of uh, really all of the modules within uh, within their uh, remedy system that we have here. And so as we move on down, some of the functionality uh, that we've got here, obviously, you know, one of the things that that happens frequently is you may do server consolidations or moves and all. You have an ability to come out here and. For example, we'll look at the assets around uh, CalPro here as our company. If for some reason we were going to do a move from one location to another, I could come in using my control key or my uh, shift key, highlight the assets that I wanted, and update the new CI location in one fell swoop there, which is just a tremendous time saver uh, that you have uh, when, you're, when you're doing those types of things. 